so this week's video is going to be a little more light-hearted because last week's video had quite a lot of emotional stuff tied up in it. So today we're going to be talking about something a little bit lighter. Talking about hats. So before we begin, of course, I have to say a big thank you to my coffee donator, Charlotte. So thank you, Charlotte, for your very generous coffee donation. It's very kind of you. So today we are going to be doing a subject that I've wanted to talk about for quite a long time. In fact, I've wanted to talk about this subject since before I had this channel up and running. Today we're going to talk about buckles on hats. Now what I'm currently wearing is a fairly cheap, quick <clears throat> representation of a 17th century felt hat. This isn't made of beaver felt, this is just made of wool felt. It's actually a little floppier than most of the hats that you see in the paintings, because most of the hats in the paintings have actually already been blocked properly and formed and stiffened a little so that they maintain their shape. And as you can see, this one really flops around quite a lot. And if I put the sides back up, you'll find that it has been sort of manipulated into being my usual bog-standard 18th century cocked hat, which we do not call a tricorn hat, otherwise Brandon F. comes and eats us in the middle of the night, and he'd be right to do it. Buckle hat. I have been racking my brains about how to approach buckle hats. If you were to ask any American school child to draw a picture of a pilgrim, they would probably draw something like this. <laughs> If you were to ask me to draw a picture of a pilgrim, I'd draw you something that looked more like this. Because that is my conception of a pilgrim, is a medieval Roman Catholic traveller uh, who is going to a sacred site, probably to atone for some vile sin, like eating chicken on a Friday. Pilgrims are another matter entirely, and I want to do another video about that and how they are absolutely not who founded the United States or the first people who arrived at Plymouth Rock, but I digress. The thing that I want to focus on in that kid's drawing is the buckle hat. This guy, this thing, that thing, that thing. That thing is not a part of 17th century material culture. People didn't wear belt buckles on their hats. Why would they wear belt buckles on their hats? There's no reason for them to wear belt buckles on their hats. They've got this super sexy side lighting chiaroscuro thing going on. They look super nice. They look really cool and moody. Why would they ruin that by putting a belt buckle on their head? The answer is they wouldn't. I have trawled art galleries, museums, online collections. I've asked art historians, and none of them have been able to come up with an actual 1600s to 1690s picture of somebody wearing a hat with a belt buckle on it that they consider genuine, that they consider realistic. I haven't been able to find a single picture of a person with a belt buckle on their hats from the 17th century. So where does this idea come from and why has it taken root in the American psyche as a part of pilgrim costume? I think the earliest picture I've found so far of a belt buckle on a hat is this one. This is by Yeams, a man called William Frederick Yeams, and he looked like this, he looked like an absolute legend. He painted this picture in 1877-78. It's called, And When Did You Last See Your Father? Obviously this child is being interrogated, it's set during the English Civil War, so it's in the 1640s, so it's too late for it to be the Pilgrims anyway, settling in America. But in the foreground here, on this chair, is this little guy. And this cheeky little chappy is a hat, with a leather belt and buckle on it. Now this is the earliest representation I have found of a buckle hat in a legit fine art painting. There may be earlier ones. Most of the 19th century depictions I found of the Pilgrim Fathers landing in Massachusetts don't have belt buckles on the hats. They don't have bands on most of the hats. So this is currently the earliest thing I've got, but it's in England. It's in Liverpool. This wasn't an American painting. This was a British painting. In America, one of the earlier pictures I've found that's really fun is this one from the Smithsonian Institute. 
and there's actually been blog posts written about this that I will link to in the description, because this is 1940. In fact, it can't be any earlier than June the 22nd, 1940, because that's when the newspaper is dated that this dude is holding. This is to celebrate a memorial, this memorial in fact, which is somewhere in Massachusetts, I think, dedicated to the landing at Plymouth Rock. It's complete fiction. This is just some old dude wearing fancy dress. This isn't a historical costume. This isn't a replica of an historical costume. This is a guy with a big falling band collar. In fact, it's probably not even a proper falling band collar. It's probably just like a drape of cloth with curtain ties on it and two big fake looking buckles on his shoes and a big fake looking buckle, 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 a big fake looking buckle on his big fake looking hat. And he looks fucking ridiculous. Let's not pretend. <laughs> he looks silly. But this is the picture of a pilgrim. This is... This is it. It's what they look like now, as far as everyone's concerned. In fact, if you go to some museums, if you go to the museum, the Pilgrim Landings Fathers, whatever the hell it's called, museum, in Jamestown, in Massachusetts, like, a, a few metres away from Plymouth Rock, they've got this on display. That's a buckle hat. They're garbage. They didn't wear those. They didn't wear those at all. This is, once again, a Victorian invention. Victorians ruin everything, as we know, if you've checked out Liz Capism's channel, she's doing a series called Victorians Ruin Everything, and this is just another thing that the Victorians ruined. So, this mad, weird myth of buckle hats seems to come from a couple of paintings and some old dude in fancy dress. <laughs> other paintings like this guy that just further reinforce that this is what pilgrims looked like. They dressed in black, they had a big white falling band collar, they had big hats, shoes with buckles on, and hats with buckles on. And most of that's probably not true, because when they first landed, they probably looked a lot more like this. Yep, big hats were fashionable. The big hat with the tall crown was a fashionable hat. Here are some from the 1620s, here are some from the 1630s, here are some from the 1640s, here are some from the 1690s. They stay in fashion. And the thing that you do see is that a lot of these hats have a band around them. They have a hat band of some sort. Now it's not going to be there with a belt buckle on it so that you can tighten it onto your head. Why not? Because as we just described, most of the hats in the period weren't floppy pieces of junk like this. Most of them were actually formed into hats, they were blocked, and many of them were then stiffened using a variety of materials so that they keep their shape, so you don't have to tighten it onto your hat, onto your head. They had fitted headgear, they had fitted hats. They were made by professional hatters, they didn't need to be adjusted to your head to fit properly. That's just not how it works. In fact, in many of the paintings from the period, you see people holding their hats in a way that would result in them flopping and losing their shape, but they don't, because they're stiffened. They're stiffened beaver or wool felt. It's a strong material, it's a good material for making hats because it keeps its shape. Yeah, you see some slightly floppier brims on them, but even then, where's the belt buckle? One of the places where you actually see a lot of weird stuff done with 17th century costume is in reenactment groups. I'm not going to name any reenactment groups specifically, but there are reenactment groups where people tend to take liberties with hat decoration. You see lots of feathers, you see people wearing barmer-style waxed cotton hats and leather hats instead of a, a real felt hat. And 90% of the hats in the period were wool or beaver felt. That's part of the reason why beavers are so endangered in some parts of North America, and have been for a while, and are basically extinct in many parts of Europe is because they were hunted almost to extinction for their fur for hats. But the appropriate things to wear in your hats, if you're reenacting the 17th century, a simple hat band, a strip of ribbon, uh, or some maybe some finger braided yarn, that might work. Some of them do look like they're braided, so maybe a nice braided, uh, some braided threads, some nice finger loop braided decorative uh, bands around your hat. Uh, you could, I guess you could put a leather band around your hat, but then you'd have to stitch the end of the leather band 
and I don't know. It's just mm, I don't know. I would stick to I would stick to um, fiber based stuff. So like finger loop braids or a ribbon. Definitely use a ribbon if you want to use a ribbon. That would be great. Um, even if you're like if you have a, a poorer impression, just a string like a hemp string or something that you can tuck your pipe into or tuck a feather into if you're feeling fancy. And of course, of course, the clay pipe. Mwah. I love it. I love that. In fact, I might get myself another hat blank and make myself a fun 17th century hat with a pipe. Put my pipe through it. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. Awesome. Awesome. That's a plan now. That's a plan. You've heard me say it on the internet. So now I have to do it. Damn. <laughs> I'm locked in to another project. Thank you, internet. <laughs> in terms of colours, black is a very popular colour, um, but in reality, a lot of the ones that you see outside of portraits of families in their formal black clothing, and remember we, we talked about how black became a formal colour in a previous video, um, at the end of the medieval period, outside of that context, you see an awful lot of hats that are either a kind of buff, off-white, creamy yellow colour. You see an awful lot of brown ones. And then occasionally you see slightly more colourful hats, but generally the popular colours seem to have been kind of dark browns to blacks, then down into off-whitey, creamy colours. Kind of natural fur colours, if you like. And if they're made of wool felt, it's perfectly reasonable that they would be that range of colours, from blacky brown through the greys to a khaki off-white colour. If you want to have a black hat, you're probably keeping that for when you're doing a formal reenactment, when you're doing a formal impression. If you're going to church, you wear your Sunday best as a Puritan. If you are having your portrait painted, if you're doing something formal, if you're going to court, say if you're reenacting a court hearing, yes, you wear your blacks. If you are a lawyer or a clergyman or a doctor, then you wear blacks because black again is a is a uh, a symbolic formal color for your clothes to be by the 17th century especially for a learned person if you're a learned gentleman then you are wearing black and probably an academic robe over that as well so yeah color wise keep it simple same as the decoration keep it as simple as you can these things aren't really ostentatious until the end of the century for most people if you are a proper dandy, like if you're a proper cavalier, um, and you are a, a fancy pants and you're reenacting a fancy man, make it bigger, make the hat band a bit broader, make the feathers more numerous, uh, and, you know, jazz it up a little, like this guy. Bam! Fancy pants. Those really are fancy pants. Wow. A bit scared. The other problem with this whole thing is people then take it way off in the opposite direction and say, not only did they not use belt buckles on their hats, belt buckles weren't fashionable and they didn't use them in the time. That is, you've taken that nugget grain of truth and you have run with it out of the park. You are now in the car park, getting into somebody else's car and driving the wrong side of the road down a highway. Please stop. You're going to get arrested. You're going to kill someone. They had belt buckles. They used and wore belt buckles. Here is a picture by Adrian Pietus van der Ven. And this is a guy wearing a buckle on his waist belt. It's right there. It's from about 1630, I think. So, yeah. They did use buckles. They used buckles an awful lot to tie belts. Because not everybody had breeches with hooks and eyes that were perfectly fitted. Some people did need to adjust their clothing. They needed them to suspend things from. This man is wearing it over his doublet, so he was probably holding a knife and a pouch on that belt, secured using his belt. They needed them for horse gear, for tack, for bridles, and various other horse things that I don't understand because I don't horse very much. They used belt buckles an awful, awful lot. They just didn't use them on their shoes or on their hats. Why not? because their shoes were tied with laces. They used these kinds of shoes. It's called a latchet shoe. And the latchet is basically that hole with the lace formed out of a piece of leather that goes over the top of that cutout in the shoe. 
So over the top of that cutout, there are two pieces of leather. I'm just doing this motion with my hands, it's really not illustrative. You can see it in the picture, there's a piece of leather on the top of that shoe. There's a corresponding one on the other side, they overlap with laces, you tie the laces. That is how you tied your shoes back then. They didn't use belt buckles until a little later. Now towards the end of the 18th century, yes, belt buckles on your shoes were a real fashion statement. Absolutely. Really, really fashionable stuff in the 17, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 1800 buckles on your shoes. Absolutely. A fashionable thing to have was a nice, uh, precious metal buckle with some gemstones on it. You are a fancy pants boy. In the 1600s, you're looking at these kind of rosettes of cloth. These sort of, um, what do they call them? Almost like a, a cockade. Like a cockade for your shoe is what we're looking at here. A rosette or a cockade to decorate your shoe. That is what you are wearing to make your shoes look fancy. These are some court shoes that are decorated with just one of those rosettes. In terms of belts on hats, that is never a fashion thing until nowadays. You do see certain hats with belts on them now. It's not something that they would have worn in the 1600s. The 17th century was a period where Puritanism, as a religious sect, becomes quite popular, especially with the people going to America. One of the things that Puritans didn't really dig was unnecessary decoration. And a belt buckle attached to your hat is definitely unnecessary decoration. Now we do see people with their hat bands used to tuck in feathers, ostrich feathers mostly, coloured feathers, in a lot of Dutch scenes. Here's a guardroom scene from the middle of the uh, 1600s, from the middle of the 17th century, showing somebody with their hat band being used to tuck a feather in. Here's another guy who's actually got his pipe, his clay pipe, stuck into the cocked side of his hat. So he's cocked up one side of his hat, probably tied it with some thread, and then he seems to have tucked his spare pipe into it, which I think is a fantastic thing to do with a pipe. That's a brilliant thing. Do that if you want to look 17th century. Put your pipe in your hat. It looks awesome. It looks kind of piratical. But the whole belt buckle thing, that's really outdated now. In fact, there are so many blog posts that I probably couldn't link them all, so I'm going to link a few blog posts that just say, this isn't how they dressed. And one of them is from a Pilgrim Fathers heritage site in the USA. So there you go. Buckle hats. I've wanted to do this since before we started this channel because I went to South Carolina and I went to Charlestown Landing and in their museum, which is generally pretty good, they had a buckle hat on a guy and it just made me so angry. I was so disappointed. They'd also rebuilt one of the original buildings using cement so they're just asking for it to collapse in that moist weather they have down in Carolina. So if anybody from Charlestown Landing Museum is, is watching this, get rid of the buckle hat and please rebuild that building. Please rebuild it using lime mortar. Stop using cement in your heritage buildings. It's so bad for them, especially down in Carolinas. So thank you so much for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I wanted to make something a bit lighter because... Arr, uh, and it's Thanksgiving in the USA soon, isn't it? So happy Thanksgiving to all my American subscribers. Um, I hope that you are all finding something to be thankful for in this difficult time that everybody's going through. So I'm very thankful for all of you guys. I'm really thankful that I've had some very positive feedback and some wonderful corrections on my previous video. So thank you very much to everybody who has provided me with corrections. I know I made a few mistakes in that video and I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise public publicly to you guys uh, for using uh, a couple of terms that are outdated and inappropriate and for making a couple of generalizations uh, specifically about bearded ladies that I didn't mean to make but clearly did. So I apologize for that. Uh, I will correct that by saying that not all bearded ladies were of course intersex. Many had uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. Uh, many were simply slightly more hairy than other people and uh, of course the term transsexual is outdated and inappropriate the term transgender or just trans is now much, much more appropriate. So thank you very much, everybody, for sticking with me and for giving me that feedback. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Taking part in this channel makes it so much more special for everyone involved. So thank you very much for taking part in that way. It really, really is cool of you. So uh, thank you very much once again for watching and for joining me once again. I will see you next time. Who will I'm a troll? Bye for now. That's sexy lighting. Give myself a little like light and dark.
called Chiaroscuro. 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 Signore. Signore. Chiaroscuro. Eh. Yeah, that's offensive. I'm not going to do that.